Hey yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Jay Molina today and we're gonna talk about the history of the t-shirt. Stay tuned. What's a t-shirt and what's the story behind it? Mainly, back in the late 19th century, that's when the t-shirt started to appear. It evolved from an undergarment. Actually, it was called a one-piece union suit. It developed from a onesie. It was like a slip-on for the whole body. But then, during 1898, in the Spanish-American War, that's when we first started seeing the issuing of a one-piece. It was in, actually until 1902, where P.H. Haynes and his company actually developed the two piece, which was a separate piece with no buttons at all, which consisted of losing the buttons and actually applying just a regular undergarment at the bottom. It started being mainly used by miners and steep doers. In 1913, 11 years later, the Navy first issued the official undergarment as a set out for the whole Navy. It's not up until 1920, seven years later, the author Scott F. Fitzgerald uses it on his book, This Side of Paradise, where the Merriam-Webster Dictionary decides to use it as an official term called T-shirt. It was actually described as a white undergarment, crew neck, short sleeve. In 1938, Sears Company decides to put out an authentic version of the T-shirt, which is actually called the Gub T-shirt, G-O-B. This is actually then used by sailors and Marines everywhere. When they remove their uniform, they actually always head on the T-shirt. This move was so large around the country that it even started being used in agriculture by farmers. All the way up into the Great Depression, these farmers and these ranchers were using it because it was easy fit and clean to use. Throughout the Great Depression, up until 1939, September 1, 1939, which is the first day in World War II, up until 1942, this was the major trend across all Air Corps, Marine, Army, you name it. In 1942, the Air Corps Gunnery School actually decides to use it and put a slogan on it. This was the first time there was a slogan on a t-shirt that it even came up on Life magazine across the whole nation. Thereon, it was used in slogans everywhere, even up to the presidential candidates. Do it with Dewey. In 1950, Hollywood comes into the game and it's actor Marlon Brando that uses it on the movie called A Streetcar Named Desire. It becomes the hot topic everywhere. Young boys start to use it. In 1960, tie-dyeing comes into effect. We have self-expression everywhere. We have protesters, commercial ads, you name it. 10 years later, we have the golden era, the 1970s up to the 1980s. We got companies, we have bands everywhere. Everywhere, every band you saw had their slogan, their logo on a t-shirt. All up until today, we have crew necks, we have B necks, we also have U necks, which is a no, a no. T-shirts today are used on a mass producing scale. And how do we make T-shirts? That's for another video. But the whole idea is that today, T-shirts are the main use for branding. It's used in athletic teams, all the way, the jersey derived from the T-shirt because of its durability, it's more durable than a regular T-shirt. You can't go out in the street and not see somebody using a t-shirt for a band, a logo, an athletic team. It even goes for shows and games. So all around, the t-shirt is pretty basic, but definitely essential for the manly wardrobe. Check us out on Instagram where we post daily outfits. I'll be posting some great companies with great t-shirts. That's it for today. Give us a like, subscribe, and as always, God bless, keep calm, and dress fire. I can't